Hello and welcome to my second video on Unplayed AI Just AI. I'm going to be continuing to talk about variations that you can find in AI programs but that aren't played by humans very much. It's still going to be the full forward low approach, one space pencil. Firstly, if white jumps, after this attachment, why does black have to exchange this peep immediately? Because it shorts black's liberties and it's a bit crude and black is forced to defend on the on the second line, after which white might be able to cover up more smoothly because the shape is more solid. Even though I said white was a stick with no ice base. So you can hunt it, and it's not that you're scared of the cut. For example, e even like this, you're not really scared of the cut because white only has few liberties and black has more than that. There is a bit of agi with this, but for the time being, White's shape on the right side is going to fall apart, and black has a very healthy corner problem. Uh, cutting directly is more interesting. Black can Atari first though, and then play her. So if you Atari, you, there's a bit of a worry about this coat. I mean, white can simply run out as well, but this also gets cut to pieces. The shape move is to play Q15 directly, and the variation given was to take all the shape points and then cut through. Essentially, the meaning of jumping up with Q14 has been damaged and black is connected up nicely with a reasonable corner and white is still not alive on the top side. This will also be quite nice if white is trying to build a moyo on the top side. It will be good for black because black will be able to live inside this area naturally. Uh, so the, the real follow-up is to play the 3-3. Three, three. Normally you'd like to block, but this exchange has left a cutting point. If you played 3-3 directly, this the corner will just be captured, and this way around, black will be solid. So this is leaving a cutting point. So it's actually a very good combination, but it's playable for both sides. Normally you should be connecting. You might want to capture this stone, but it's the problem is that the shape point is to play Q15. It's always a shape point. Pretty much whenever white tries to cut with P16, Q15 is the shape point. So it turns out that it's more severe if you can connect. And then you're still aiming at this cutting point. Though it's, you probably won't do it immediately because whichever side you cut, white will capture that side. For example, like this, you do get a corner, but actually the shape isn't that efficient. Especially this stone here, it's, it's developing off a strong group and R12 looks far too close to white's thickness. White can attack on a pretty large scale like this. You don't want to block because you get cut immediately. Like if you just capture the stone, white is satisfied to connect everything up. And the Q17 stone, even though it's cutting out a panuki, it's still a valuable move. The, the trick is to honey here. So now if white responds, you can separate the stones at least. Uh, there, there's still the edgy of 016 running out, which isn't particularly nice, but black can still squeeze it and sacrifice. However, white has a way to generate a lot of bad edgy. This position is very difficult for black. If you're going to play like this, you're intending to fight. So there might be a variation like this. I think black can capture the corner, but it's not that clean, especially when there's a cutting point here. And there's, there was also this variation given, and it's, it's a similar story. So I can Atari and play the checkpoint, and then. But actually, black is already very low on liberties. If you just capture. It doesn't look good for black. This is a golden chicken standing on one leg to see White wins. So it looks like black's only option is to play like this, but that's a disastrous code because white continues several times and take three big points. That's... Also, I did check this variation with the AI. One thing to mention is that you shouldn't Atari here because the 4 horse stone is already completely surrounded and it's not that valuable anymore. Normally it's super valuable, but in this case you're just helping black reinforce the center. And you've only captured one stone and you still haven't claimed the corner, which isn't really good, very good. So this is certainly the move. And I mentioned last time about C and D, what my ideas, and the AI did approve, though was, you shouldn't play them very soon because white is completely alive. If you play C, the AI's reputation was to play like this, but it still thought that this was playable. Actually, 
it's sometimes it, it, it was it was considering just exchanging this. The co isn't realistic, but it, at least this is pretty much sent in. So that makes a difference when white turns. So white isn't going, ever going to play this Atari because then this is just a flower code that will lose nothing from this code. And one reason for white wanting to to counter pincer is that you're treating R14 lightly, but you're also worried that black will capture it on a large scale. If you do nothing, you know, black might add another move here or add another move here, but certainly black will not be adding another move here anytime soon, which is a purely defensive move, which still leaves a lot of value. Black will be playing more for territory. If you can get this exchange in, it's already possibly got some benefit, and if black had to move later, the proper move is still to play here. If white has supports on the top, and maybe has a stone around here, and at the very least, then this can work quite well. In this shape, if white plays around here, there's no reason for black to capture this stone. Black's corner is alive in good shape. If black is going to capture, black should capture on a larger scale, and th this direction might also work. Even trying to capture it on this sort of scale is quite a good idea. And this shape is pretty important because if you try to capture it on in any other way, say like this, there's always problems around here. Even if white is just sacrificing the stone, this is very annoying. Even if you play here, this is annoying, threatening to connect up underneath. And if you play further away, this is still a problem. So, so actually, in these shapes, when there's when you're capturing a dead stone, often you do need to play your stones quite solidly. And but this is the most efficient way to try to defend all the edgy with Omni. Later, the most white is going to have is this, but for the time being, it will be counter attack. So this is probably a good exchange for white. But if white is trying to develop the top side, just to give up the edge like this and add another move. But of course, black is getting solid here, so arguably white's stones are too close to black's thickness. But they are doing a job of reducing it and still leaving some edge in this shape. And the question is also partially if white has a supporting stone at the top, should white be trying to get more in the corner? Because white already has support. So maybe white doesn't have to defend O17 so much, and should just take the corner or fight more strongly. But yeah, Go theory is very twisting and turning, complicated like that. Sometimes having supporting stones allows you to tanuki like this, or sometimes it means you need to be fighting more strongly. So about some of the variations, if, if white does tanuki, and the AI does like to tanuki here. So I said A was the proper move, at which point you should just make a two-space extension. So you might want to try, wonder why that doesn't play B. You should still play a two-space extension. I used to wonder why why it doesn't play further here, because it seems that this is quite heavy, playing so close to Black's thickness. But I think it's actually valuing the, this move as a big endgame move. And if O17 gets captured with something like this, or even if Black just connects on any and that's too, that's too submissive for move, at least to extend first, then that disappears. So it's saying the side is still pretty valuable, uh, even though the stone is so close to it. And I guess it's also valuing the fact that there's still Aji here. If black tanukis, then this is actually quite annoying. But white lives very easily like this. You, might, you can probably get away with extending, and that's a very big corner. Later, this is forcing, but it's already alive. So you should be extending. And if white does have supporting stones, there are interesting things with the push and cut. Uh, but the simple move is, is sometimes best, just to aim at both cutting points. Like sometimes, if you can play this co immediately, that's quite nice. But if you get captured, everything, everything is dying. This is often a better way to start the code. So if black still tries to start the code, then you already have a local code thread here. And this is a super heavy code for both sides. This black corner is getting a bit surrounded as well. So normally black should be, say, defending here, and then white can live uh, easily. There's still a cutting point. 
and it's not that easy to see what Black is going to be able to do against these stones here. Firstly, O17 is already light, so you don't have to save it, and there's there's no easy way to lean on to, to cut it off. The most thing you can do is lean on it, but that's not even said that it's not necessarily worth it. Uh, so this might be a better move to try to lean on it directly rather than defend this cutting point. But the, the cutting point remains. I guess what else this didn't do? It's not that big a deal for what Black's captured it on this scale. Even though the corner's already disappeared, there's still a cutting point. And there's still some funny agi with the, the cut here. So Depending solidly, well, I think this, this shape actually appeared in, a, in one of the China-Japan Super Glow matches. Kato Masao against Neo Weeping. I think Neo Weeping played something like this later, much later. AI tends to say that actually this is very uncomfortable, and both sides have to move people. This is not a great shape. Another idea is to defend more actively like this, then white can play further away. Now, you're playing further away partially because this is somewhat sente, and also it's not such a big deal if this gets captured anymore, because you're using the edge in the corner instead, and black has to spend another move in the corner. I'm not sure exactly what there is in the corner, but. So back to Nuki is maybe there's something like this. So there's a few too many cutting points in black shape. At the least, white should be able to lit, I think. Uh, I mean, actually, the, the cutting points are already a bit risky. White might be able to sacrifice the group on the right. But even just the simple variation lives very easily. I don't think I talked about uh, attaching here yet. So this is trying to not defend so solidly and trying to move the group out into the center and in, in doing so it will, it will surround R14 on a lot larger scale so if R14 just dies like that it might be more efficient. However you are giving white strength at the top. The normal move is to honey and enter the corner. It's funny because human just like was always to play C, but the AI is saying that this is just better for black, and our whole scene has become meaningless. It still looks like there's some cutting edgy, but I think the AI was just saying that firstly the position of M17 is not efficient. It's determined to use the cutting edgy, and the cutting edgy is already pretty much prevented. Like you'd rather this stone be around K17 normally, but if you do play K17. You might be worried that Blackie is ready to go to capture this on a larger scale. And if all you have is sacrificing like this and not, not the cut, then it might not be very efficient. The AI was suggesting in this position White has to keep fighting. If, if White is going to determine to threaten this cut, then White has to threaten the cut immediately. And this is one crazy fight. And as usual, the problem is that the cut is not so severe, especially in this position when there's an Atari. I think in this position you would just Atari and make life. You, this is already a lie, pretty much. There's a co in the corner, but it has a pretty negative impact against White's group as well. Sometimes there are, are funny moves like this, but in this position, White is in a short strip of liberties. So for example, this isn't going to work. The, the four stones are in it, sorry. Locally, you can expect something like this. And actually, Black is trying to def defend the shape even more efficiently. You might can just Atari right here. Yeah, for now you have to defend. But, but later, the white shape is still not great. Um, other than that, it was saying that this might just be the best move. Uh, it's not easy to cut. So just prop it in the most efficient way possible. This is also helping the cut later, but uh, you don't want R14 to die on large scale, and you still want to be able to use it somehow. And it was just saying both sides, both sides can nuke now. You can extend as well, and push, and this is quite a nice wall. These moves are looking very crude right now, but their job was just to make R14 look bad. It's also this sort of move, as usual. So the AI was saying, Actually, with R12 so close, it's not easy to save R14, so you should just sacrifice and try to get as much as possible from the sacrifice. So if Black 
descends, which would be the normal shape point, then this is too much. You, you can't really connect here, I think. That's, you're, you're helping white connect on the outside, and then white can just come out here. That's a disaster, because black doesn't even have one eye yet. Black shape has been destroyed. You could connect, but then white is sacrificing as many points as possible. The AI move here was to still fight for those points in the corner. Of course, there's some more dangerous edgy on the outside. If white does manage to pull out our team, there's also this potential code, but it's not going to happen until white defends, probably. But there is still this code edgy. So push here, short the liberties. White that has to respond to this. Uh, that was also saying the cut might be uh, You can't hunt in because it gets laddered, but uh, actually the shape point is to a tower. That was giving up R14 too easily. There's also a move up B. There was some strange combination like this. But you know, in, in essence, you're still giving up on R14. Black is getting the corner, and this shape isn't settled, this shape isn't settled. And th this is a nice move because it's both making the corner alive, which mitigates this cut, and it also mitigates this cut. So then this is pretty painful if white responds while it's not alive yet and black is getting a little extra in the corner. Uh, black might take time to counterattack or maybe defend this cutting point somehow. Maybe they just defend the cutting point and ask white to run away. But white probably won't actually cut. Do something about this cutting point. Maybe push and then aim at this honey in order to cut. Because, because after this sort of cut there's actually a shortage of liberties in the corner as well. So even though you have this Atari there's still some bad edgy in the corner. I was also suggesting this crazy move. So if you do run immediately, then the corner is captured. The outside's not dead either. But if black can get this move in centre, then it's completely different, which is why black cuts. Okay, th those are some pretty complicated variations, but the main variation is this one. Of course, black responds. Now, if white saves the corner, R12 is in the perfect Joseki follow-up position. Aim at S15, and S15 works because black has this O15. So you, so it, it just gets captured because of O15. Still, it's not as severe as it looks because white isn't going to defend in the corner and just live with the Lote and only two eyes. White can come out here yeah, and just come out into the center. So, because of R12, white doesn't want to play like this. If R12 was anywhere else, any other pincer, then this is perfectly normal and is often actually good just to keep it white. Humans used to think that it wasn't so good for white because black was just very solid. But the AI often says that white is taking the corner and center. But with R12, it's a different story. So that's why white tries to connect here first. Super big move, because white has spent moves blocking off the black group. And black still hasn't necessarily connected up to anything. It's moving out towards the center, but it still doesn't have eye space. And it's not clear if R12 is really helping black that much, because it's on the third line and it's already partially cut off by the R14. So it's trying to get that a little bit extra. I think the standard move is to play at B. Just to push. Actually, you might you can delay the push. You might have other Raji, whether the nice move or the jump. Later, this is Sento against the corner, which so essentially later you can play something like this, and it's pretty awkward. So I think it's because there's this sort of Raji that. The AI says that R12 is a bit too close to the white stones. Yes, the white stones have no eye space like this, but if anything, R12 helps white make eye space. If black stone was just a bit further away, then this would be good for black. But it's just that the position of R12 is not good. At this point, black doesn't have a very good move. Black probably should just capture, at which point white can capture, and essentially white has captured this stone in centre. So that's a better endgame. Of course, if you still want to use this agility, then you're not going to do that. Uh, if, then you have to connect or side of one. But if this stone is already dead, then you can use this. But I can take Sente here. In any case, this is a good endgame for what? Rather than playing here, which is good. Actually, there's still something interesting going on here. But if you play here just like this, then I think black can lock. The agi looks not very nice, but black wins. So if you're going to do anything, you have to play this first and then climb. But again, it's go-to. And you've sacrificed an extra stone, which is never very comfortable. Okay, so that was just a diversion. Okay, 
that can also play A, and this is pretty complicated. So white will save the stone. So white is just trying to save the stones on both sides. Hence, white can't really expect to take sense here in this fight. But white wants to emphasize that black isn't really getting any territory out of this. So black can turn. Extension is a solid move because you're trying to emphasize the attack on the corner. So if white comes out here through this sort of move, then black, uh, black having a solid shape is going to make a big difference. So normally you have to defend, and sometimes black just plays solidly again, and you can try to attack this very severely. The problem is, of course, that you've already given up something on the top, and black is not alive either. Only white can sneak here, if white has support on the top. A solid move would just be to connect everything up, and, but then white just lives pretty easily as well, defending this cut, cutting point at, in a very efficient way. It's gonna, black is going to have to defend this cut normally like this, and then white will stop in the corner. White can also consider sacrificing these three stones. Something like this. For now you're, you're threatening to capture it, but if black can defend like this, still not great shape. But white's motivation is that there's some bad agi around here. Not sure where the shape point is. All of the three moves look a bit like shape points. Even this move. But it depends on what happens later. So there are some other moves here. I've never seen these in, in human games though. This is the way for white to connect the stones up. Black is trying to say that black is going to get the corner and still deal with R12 in a, in a nice way. So normally you can't connect because this is already surrounded. Of course it's tricky, but you, you, you can probably do something here, but it's, it's not going to be much of an attack on black. White runs out. So normally black is just playing solidly. This empty triangle isn't nice, but it, eventually black will be capturing this stone and solidly getting out in the center. White's shape is also pretty solid as well. Though. White is settling on both sides and the corner is still open. You can also just take the corner and both sides will sneak here. I mean, even this isn't forcing, I think. So actually, there's, there's still some wedge edgy, so this is still a shape point. Or you, even capturing the stone is a shape point, actually. If white is already seeing counter attack. But it's too low. Um, black is generally not satisfied with this result to spend another move. Is this funny move? So without these two stones on the right, normally you just back off. And if anything, black is helping white gain shape, because black is still in a short shoulder of feet. Black and white's shape is very nice. Uh, so one thing is uh, you can Atari. Uh, you get press low with this Atari. So locally, black, black is trying to avoid having to spend another move to, to prevent this. If black can just live in the corner, then it... So you can try running out here, and it's very complicated. If you play A, the key problem is that uh, this corner move is forcing. It gives up something in the center. But then it pretty much means white is already captured, especially as A is forcing. And there was this cool move, which is essentially using the fact that this is center. It, isn't, it doesn't, Black doesn't want to use the center necessarily because there's still a cutting point here. And also Black might want to wedge later. So this was an interesting shape point. And shorting the liberties like this. It's not actually dead yet. There's always this. Oh, but it's a pretty big sacrifice. This was at this move. And... There's a nice move here to just capture white, and white just has to sacrifice. If you try to run away, you have to exchange all these if you want to get out, but that's just helping black a lot on the outside. And actually locally, black can already get a lot of liberties like this. Both sides can live like this. 
So pushing through, even with the supporting stone here, is a bit much. So the AI was suggesting this move. Of course, if you block, then maybe just this sort of simple variation. Maybe just this area underneath. Just take the corner of this guy. Some Aji. But R12 isn't necessarily at a shape point because it's not shorting the flat by its abilities. I mean, this is also possible. I haven't really looked at this. And then again, you're retiring underneath, and black looks fairly dead. But then there's also this. I mean, black is still dead in the corner, but white is black again, and something on the outside as well. So, so the AI was saying you should just hurry first, and then it allows you to block in the corner. And then this exchange becomes very bad, but of course black's exchanges are extremely bad as well. Giving up this stone, playing an empty triangle, if white has the ladder this is pretty bad. We'll leave it here for today. Why don't you play some of these variations in your own games? Thank you for watching.